First, I'll put our daily update on COVID-19 metrics out. Yesterday, the Department of Public Health reported 4,747 new cases. Just under 90,000 tests were reported. In total, over 8.9 million tests have been conducted statewide. The seven-day average for positivity is about 5.3 percent. And statewide, over 1,400 people, just over 1,400 people are hospitalized and 230 people are in the ICU. Massachusetts is now experiencing a rapid increase in new positive cases in the wake of Thanksgiving. And in turn, the number of people becoming ill and needing hospitalization is also increasing. We've brought our field hospital online in Worcester and are working on a second location in Lowell. But even with these additional resources, we can't afford to continue to strain the hospital system at this rate. The increase is also compounded by staffing shortages at a number of hospitals that have been recently reported to the state. In response to these risks, the hospital system's ability to serve patients and support their staff is being compromised, so today we're announcing that effective Friday, hospitals will curtail elective procedures that can be safely postponed. This action will free up both necessary staffing and beds. Secretary Sutters will discuss this in more detail. She and we have been talking to the hospitals about this for the past several days. Massachusetts is a national leader in COVID-19 testing. We've been ranked in the top five states for testing per capita nationwide pretty much since April. And we've come a long way in building out a robust testing strategy. This past spring, we were completing about 3,000 tests per day statewide. Now we're completing over 100,000 tests per day statewide. We have over 350 testing sites around the Commonwealth, and you can find those on a map at a site near you www.mass.gov slash COVID test map. We've made tremendous progress to make testing widely available, but there's always more to do. As we all know we're in the midst of a second surge. We're seeing a higher number of new cases each day, and in turn, an increase in hospitalization statewide. We're certainly better prepared to handle this than we were before and have ramped up everything from our PPE stockpile to our hospital capacity to our field hospital operations and many others. And our hospitals are working day and night to provide the critical care to people that they need. But as this surge continues, we must continue to do everything we can to stop the spread and help people identify and recognize their own situation with respect to COVID. So today in collaboration with the command center, our administration is announcing an expansion of our state's free testing program across the Commonwealth. From a combination of new and relocated testing sites, Massachusetts will have more testing locations available in each county to conduct significantly more tests for the people of the Commonwealth. And I would just add that all of these sites will be able to deal with the fact that it is getting colder and winter is coming. Today's plan includes three new free express testing locations in Framingham, New Bedford, and Lynn. This effort will be in addition to the $150 million investment we've already made in testing to continue to provide access to testing across the Commonwealth. These new sites will be operated by Project Beacon, the vendor that's currently running the high volume express testing site in Revere. Their model is proven to be quick and efficient as anyone can book an online appointment and visit a drive-through testing site. These four locations will have the capacity to do up to 1,000 tests per day per site. The Framingham location is launching today, and the rest will be open and operational by the end of December. These testing sites will also be winterized, as I said before, so as the weather turns bad, folks can get in and out safely. Today, we're also announcing the expansion of free testing in four counties, Barnstable, Berkshire, Franklin, and Hampshire. In Western Mass, free testing sites will be coming to Amherst, Great Barrington, Greenfield, North Adams, and Pittsfield. In Amherst, the command center is partnering with UMass to support free testing for residents, and we're working with Berkshire Health Systems to expand free testing across a number of sites in Berkshire County. And in Greenfield, we're providing a mobile testing service, and these Western Mass sites will be also be operational by the end of the month. 
On Cape Cod, Barnstable County Department of Health and Environment will be operating a testing program, including a drive through site in Falmouth. This effort was made poss possible by the Cape's legislative delegation. We thank them for their work on this and is supported with $550,000 in state funds. In total, with today's additions, the state will be supporting free COVID-19 testing so far in 25 communities. That's an increase of 17 communities compared to when we launched the Stop the Spread program back in July. Now, last spring, when we first launched this program, the Commonwealth was completing around 3,000 tests per week at our state-operated sites. By the end of December, with this new plan in place, the state will have the capacity to complete 110,000 tests a week through free testing sites that are sponsored by the Commonwealth, which represents 50% increase for state-financed and organized testing sites alone. This is in addition to the over 350 existing sites across the Commonwealth. And our state-supported sites are extremely efficient. On average, tested, con tests conducted at our Stop the Spread sites have a turnaround time of just less than two days. And as we enter the winter months, testing will continue to be a crucial tool to fight COVID. But folks need to keep in mind that testing only represents a moment in time, and there are several other prevention measures that we must all practice every day. We all do know how to stop the spread of COVID, but repetition and diligence is key. Wear a mask in public, avoid gathering in groups, informal or formal, and please don't let your guard down. Practice good hygiene and get a test if you think you are exposed or you feel sick. It's critical that we all keep working this so that we can keep our schools and our economy functioning. And as I said before, the public health experts are constantly evaluating public health data and every option is on the table if infections and hospitalizations continue to climb. We're in the holiday season and I know folks for the most part are tired of dealing with all this, but the disease is highly contagious and will continue to be dangerous for quite some time. Please continue to make smart choices and abide by the state guidelines. Just want to quote Eric Dixon, who spoke at our opening of the DCU field hospital site last week when he said two things. The first thing he said was that most people, most of the time, are doing the right thing. But what we really need in Massachusetts is for all people to do the right thing all of the time. And he then said it's particularly important to the folks in our healthcare community who carry the brunt and the burden of taking care of so many people when they get sick. They are the ones who day in and day out, we all rely on to make up for the fact that every single day there are people for whom this virus is hospitalizable and potentially deadly. And for them, and he commented and he said that when those folks see people out and about in gatherings and groups without wearing masks, it is profoundly depressing for them because they know that if people all the time, all the people played by the rules and did the things that have been advised, it would be the best and most important way we can all win this fight. We're obviously waiting approval at this point in time from the feds with respect to vaccines. Once this happens, Massachusetts will be prepared to start distributing available first doses. And the feds have informed us that we should expect to receive 300,000 first doses by the end of December. Those doses will be prioritized to frontline healthcare workers first and then to long-term care facilities. We have a comprehensive plan to distribute the vaccine in a safe and effective manner, and we'll plan to share more details with you on this on Wednesday so that every resident will have access to more information on how this process will work. But even with vaccines coming to Massachusetts and other places around the country, we still have a long way to go, and I have to urge people once again to do their part.